Friends, good morning. Oh, the kids are so much more enthusiastic, friends. Come on, good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. So glad to have you here with us as we worship God as the calendar turns to May and spring. It's a great time to be alive in Ohio, friends. Have some joy in your hearts. Have some smiles on your faces. Come on. We're Ohio proud. It's springtime. All right. Good to have you here with us today. Friends, as always, we're going to begin with a few announcements today. First of all, if you are interested in joining our church, we have some people going to join our church on May 21st and on May 28th. On May 21st, there's going to be confirmation. We've got some baptisms that day, some people joining the church. So if you have been coming to our church but have not yet officially joined and would like to do so, please speak to me or call the church office and let us know. If you're someone who used to come, we have some people who used to come and they went to someplace else or moved away and then came back again. I know some people like that as well. We'd love to have you renew your membership as well. So if you're interested in officially becoming a member of the church, um, please let me know. And then um, we have the uh, friendship tea party coming up. What we're trying to do is we've got a few different women's Bible studies, but we like to try to do something collectively for women of all ages to get together and talk about things we can do for the women in our church. And so rather than do it on Mother's Day, they're going to do that on the Sunday after Mother's Day. Oh, friends, I forgot to announce, we are, uh, they just told me that this projector is not working for the front screen. So um, for today's service, even though I just said, you know, we live in Ohio, we should be happy and stuff, sometimes technology fails us, okay? So that projector is down. I'm looking at the back screen. If you look over your shoulder, you'll see I'm looking at the announcement slides and forgot that you guys don't, can't see them up here with the front projector. So if you look over your shoulder, there's even a slide there about this. But they're having a tea party, and it's going to be the Sunday after Mother's Day on May 21st. It's going to be at 4 o'clock. And um, they're inviting all the women of the church to come to be part of that. And I'm trying to get some dads or retired men, whoever, to help serve that day for the women. So if you could help with that, let me know. But we want to invite ladies of all ages to come out, have a fellowship time together, and talk about doing some things for the women in our church. If you could put the next slide on. If you're looking over your shoulder again, friends, with me. We have the next slide is about VBS. And Jessica's going to come forward on the yellow microphone, Henry, and she's going to say a few words about VBS. Good morning. Um, I just want to really quickly remind you that registration is open for VBS. The sooner we can start knowing who's coming, the better it is for us to organize everything. Inside your bulletin, you have this lovely flyer, and there's a QR code on here. But what I want to talk about really quickly today is this is also how you can volunteer to help with VBS. So if you scan this QR code, and I don't expect you to see my, my phone right now, but there's all the information about our VBS, and if you scroll down, there's the participant registration where you can register all of your lovely children or grandchildren, whoever you're bringing to VBS, but below that is our volunteer registration, and if you click on register, you can give us all of your information, your, your name, your phone number, your email address, um, and those are the only required ones. Remember, if it has the little red star on it, so those are the ones that we're, we need for uh, communicating with you, and then, it says, what positions are you interested in? And the reason we really want to urge you to use the QR code instead of just, we will have paper signups for those of you that prefer that method. Um, but for those of you who don't mind what you do, and, you, and maybe you're like, I don't care if I shepherd, or I don't care if I help out in that classroom, or I don't care if you want me to do science or Bible study, I don't, I don't, whatever you want me to do, I'll just do it. Because we hear that a lot over the time, but there's no real easy way to do that on the paper sheets. So on our fancy little online version, it says, what positions are you interested in? And there's even a description what each of those positions even are, because sometimes we call things like this year, it's a crew leader because we're space crews because we're going out of this world with stellar VBS. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. Register for it. But um, sometimes we name things that make no sense. So there's a little blurb about what the heck that position would even mean, and you can choose multiple ones. So maybe you don't care if you work with the lower elementary students, which are the K through 2-3. Uh, or maybe uh, you're like, I don't care, I'll work with the sixth graders, I don't care, whatever you want us to do. You can choose multiple positions that you could volunteer for. That doesn't mean we're going to make you do multiple things, but it gives us the ability to say, okay, we, we have somebody who's willing to do this one, we don't have anybody who's willing to do that, and we can kind of shift the positions based on your availability and, and what you're able to do, because I know so many of you really just want to help, and we love that and we appreciate that. So again, if you scan our lovely QR code, you can 
scroll down to the volunteer registration, then you can tell us what you're willing to do. We will have the paper sheets up in the Narthex once, once we know. We've already had some people volunteer to, to do this, and we already have some people that we can start assigning positions, and that's wonderful, so thank you, those of you who have already done it. We also have a bunch of, I think we already have 20 participants registered for VBS, so thank you for doing that. Um, but we really want to make sure that you knew that this was an option for our volunteers as well. And if you need any help with that, we're happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. So that's for Vacation Bible School. There are also work nights for Vacation Bible School. And if uh, you're able to help, if you're able to come, um, you don't have to be a great artist. You can use a pair of scissors. You can use scotch tape, you know, if you're able to cut things out or trace things or something like that. They make all the decorations for Vacation Bible School. If you're relatively new to our church, we have some big things that happen in the summertime here. Vacation Bible School and the Big Church Garage Sale will take a lot of volunteers. So if you can help us get ready for VBS, that would be fantastic. Other announcements here. The fifth grade ceremony for the fifth grader to move up is coming up soon. It's on May 20th from four to five, and that's the five to six thing. So all fifth graders need to let Kayla know. We think we've got everybody, but we want to RSVP and make sure we have everybody to know about that. Sandy, you have an announcement as well? Thank you, Sandy. So yes, the congregation did vote overwhelmingly to go back to doing communion in the traditional way. We're still not going to do it by intinction, however, just to have that extra level of precaution. So what we're going to have is four stations today, as we used to do through the years. We will come forward and take communion and get a little piece of bread and your own individual cup, so you'll still be doing it that way. If you feel more comfortable with the COVID cups, though, those will still be up here on the altar, and rather than getting one of the lines for communion later, you can come up and get a COVID cup, as we've been using the past year and a half or so, or two years, I guess it's been now from the altar this morning. Otherwise, you can take communion by the little pieces of bread and individual cups, which the congregation voted overwhelmingly to go back to that. And if you're going to help serve, Sandy's saying, please let Sandy know or jot your name and, and phone number on a piece of paper for her if you want to do that in the future and be part of that team. Are there other announcements this morning? I can't see it from this far away. I apologize. I can't see the back screen. Basketball camp? Okay. August 4th, 5th, and 6th. $35 you. early registration fee. <laughs> See Kayla for more information. <laughs> All right, so if you look over your shoulder, guys, you can see that maybe. So I can usually do this and see it cl much closer to me. So that's that's announcement. A youth retreat is at the end of the month. So if you're able to help with a youth retreat, is there anything I thought we need to read in the smaller print, Elizabeth? Juice boxes, pop, individual chips or snacks, fruit bars, disinfectant wipes, Oreos, A1 steak sauce. All right, is that list in the bulletin, Kayla? Dominic specifically. What's that? Sign up in the Narthex. All right, so there's a list in the Narthex. The youth have a big retreat that they take. They're not allowed to take their phones to and all that kind of stuff. Youth Sunday is May 21st, May 28th. They go on a retreat. So Kayla's asking for some donations of things that they need for that retreat because a lot of youth go on that. So if you can help sign up for something there. There's a list that will be more clear than that. Over, you know, they'll be out there in the narthex. You can sign up. And once again, there's nothing we can do about technology when the projector doesn't work this morning. We'll try to get it fixed for next week. All right, friends, I think that concludes our announcements. I appreciate your patience and everything with that, with technology this morning. Uh, I'm going to uh, something else that we decided to go put back in since we um, had, do not have uh, people feel comfortable enough to take communion. We figured that people would feel comfortable enough to give each other a handshake or a hug this morning. So we're going to go back to taking a minute to pass the peace before we do our first song. So I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able. If you feel comfortable, greet someone and give them a handshake or a hug. If you don't, just say hi to them. That's fine. Say hi to somebody nearby you. And then we're going to remain standing for our first song.
Friends, please remain standing as you return to your places. If you're able, please remain standing. And we'll have our opening song this morning. They're going to lead us in singing. I'm talking about grace today, so they're going to lead us in singing, Your Grace is Enough. Unfortunately, you'll have to look over your shoulder if you want to see the words, or you can just listen, whatever you like to do. As firmly grounded leads us in singing, Your Grace is Enough. your prayer with me, please, friends. Lord God, we thank you for this glorious day that you have made, for the chance that we have to come together and worship you and praise your name. We pray you fill this place with your Holy Spirit in each one of us, Lord, to overflowing. So we leave this place and go out into the world. Your love and grace and mercy would overflow from us into this world that needs it so much. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Oh man, I'd like to invite the children to come and join for the children's time, please. Come up, everybody, find a seat someplace. Okay, you got to be more enthusiastic than the adults. Okay, you ready? Good morning. Good morning. All right, welcome to the house of the Lord today. So glad to have you with us. Today, I'm talking with the adults about grace, about God's amazing grace, that God reaches out to us. But there's another word, of grace, that I'm going to talk about with you guys today. Has anyone ever said grace before a meal? You know what that means? What's it mean? If you say grace before a meal, what are you doing? Are you playing basketball if you're saying grace before a meal? Are you fishing? What are you doing if you say grace before a meal? You're praying. You're praying, and what are you praying? Give an example. What are you, what are you praying in that situation? What are you praying, Dominic? Um, for the food you have. We're praying. We're praying thanks to God for the food that we have, okay? So we've always done that at my house, yes. And God gives us food so we don't starve. God does give us food so we don't starve. It's a blessing from God. I believe everything I have is a blessing from God. The food I have, the clothes I have, I've got a home to live in, I've got people that love me. And so I try to say thanks. Yes? If, if, if you get hurt, God can make you feel better. Right. Okay. So there's lots of things God does for us. Okay. And so because we have a God that made us and loves us and gives us all these great things, we try to say thanks to God. In fact, we come to worship to say thanks and God, part of why we're here is to say thanks for God and to give back in some ways, to have, try to grow to be more like Jesus and then try to serve some way. But this morning I'm going to talk to you about grace before a meal, okay? And I see my son Christian is here with us today. He must be back from college. So Christian's got to come and join me real quick. Somewhere in the uh, sanctuary is my daughter Elizabeth because she's going to be singing. Where'd she go, Squirt? She went out to help the kids now? All right. So Christian's going to help me out. He didn't know he was going to do this, but he's going to help me out. Because I wasn't, you know, Christian's going to be here. So Christian's going to help us. So at our house, because growing up daring means you grow up singing a lot. So we have not only prayers that we pray, like, thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. That would be one that we would pray. But we turn everything into a song, okay? So it goes like this. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the little birds that sing a ling a ling. Thank you, God, for everything. Say it again. All right, so we turn everything into songs. Here, Christian. I'm going to Christian the yellow microphone, Henry, and he'll sing with us, okay? He's on the yellow mic. So another one that we do is the Superman prayer, and we've taught this to some kids at church, so you would know this one, but before we eat, we would sing Superman, because I'm a big superhero fan, okay? So we take the Superman song from the movie and turn it into a song. You ready? Thank, Thank you, God, for giving us food. Thank you, God, for giving us friends. For giving us food, for giving us friends. We thank you, God. Amen. And then we fly out, okay? All right? And another one that we sing is, what's the other one that we sing a lot? I had one in my head this morning, you know. The Coca-Cola one. We took the Coca-Cola theme song from a commercial and we turned that into one too. That was another one, Cam. All right, so that one goes like this. The sun will always shine, the birds will always sing. As long as there is God, there's always the real thing. Jesus Christ came down to die for our sins. And now we thank you, Lord, as this meal begins. Break it down now. Do, 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 amen. Do, 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 Jesus is the real thing. But our kids grew up singing grace, and they could pick the ones that they wanted to do. And you said, Johnny, absolutely, that's another one. Campbell. There's lots of prayers out there that people can sing. But we always, and sometimes we'd go to restaurants, okay? And before we'd be eating in a restaurant, all of a sudden my family would start singing the Coca-Cola prayer or something like that. People would be looking at us, what are you doing? And we would say, we're just giving thanks to God before we eat. Because every time we have a meal, we remember that God blesses us, okay? Having a meal is a time to say thanks. And also another time that people pray is at the end of the day. 
So we would always pray with our kids when they were growing up at the end of the day. We would say a prayer when we put them to bed. So we'd say, hey, this is a day. We had a great day today. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for the day that's going to come tomorrow. So we always want to stop and remember to give thanks. So we call that grace. We say grace or we sing grace. But we do something to say thanks to God a couple times a day. So we remember that God is blessing us all day long. Yes. You always pray before you go to bed. We do. Some people pray in the morning. We would pray at nighttime when we'd be getting ready to go to bed. But, but we took time to pray to say thanks because God does such great things for us. We want to always remember to give thanks. So you, maybe you sing prayer at your house. Maybe you pray, you know, with words. However you do it, we want to try to remember to say thanks to God, okay? But we don't just do it when we're at home. We try to do it everywhere so that everybody can see we're people that love God and want to give thanks to God for all God does for us, okay? All right, let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you so much for all we have to be thankful for, for the people that love us, for homes to live in, for clothes that we wear, for food that we eat. We just give you thanks, Lord, for everything. Help us to remember to try to give thanks to you a couple times a day so that we're always thankful for all the love you give us and all the blessings you give us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. You can go back to Children's Church. Friends, as always, we're going to share our joys and concerns with one another. If you have a joy or concern to share this morning, please raise a hand and Usher will bring a microphone to you. Well, I'd like to, you to continue to pray for my slow recovery for, the, for my surgery. Um, I had a life-changing joy that happened Friday. I want to go back to when Kelly pitch hit for me when I was in surgery, when we sang that song, uh, Trust in the Lord. And I, w I want to thank Kelly Oleski for doing that. And as a result of what has been happening in the chain of events, as of Friday, I joined the ranks of the retirees. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I think uh, either my mom or dad asked for prayers last week for um, Robert Lott. Um, he and my grandmother came to church here for years, um, and he uh, moved into Shepherd of the Valley Monday, uh, Monday, not Monday. He moved in in January, and um, he fell a couple of weeks ago and broke his hip. Um, he's recovering, but it is... Um, he doesn't have his normal, you know, sharpness, and he's he's sleeping a lot, and he's in pain, and he's very heavily medicated, and it's very difficult to see him like that because even at 91, he was still very sharp, and he's still very, you know, with it, and um, we want to see that back. So if we could get some prayers for Robert Lott. Um, he's in room 1124 at Shepherd of the Valley, so if anybody wants to send a card, um, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning again. I'm sorry I, I forgot uh, to tell you something about the community servers. It's called aging. Uh, please put your slip of paper in the collection plate. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I wanted to take a quick second um, to thank a special person that is in town today. Um, many of you know that the Hoy family is very involved in our sports ministry program, and Stacy's sister has actually um, come in a couple times from Toledo to help us out with our volleyball program. So Risa is over there today, I noticed. Um, so I just want to say a special thank you to her. She came out and helped us with an extra practice. We have a lot of new kids, and we wanted to give them some one-on-one -on -one help yesterday. So she came and helped our volleyball practice yesterday, and she came and helped back in April. April with our um, clinic. So thank you, Risa. I just wanted to say thank you to the ladies that have been 
coming to the VBS workdays. Um, I've gotten to know them very well, and it's been a blast. We laugh, we laugh some more, and then we pick on each other and have a really good time. It is so much fun, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who comes out because I don't know everyone in this church, and getting to know the people and the history of the church has just been a true blessing for me. So I just want to say thank you to my ladies. Hi, I'm Jan Chryslop, and last week I asked for prayers because I've got a case of shingles, and they pretty well faded, and I'm doing much better, and thank you all for the prayers. I'll just add a joy. My son Alexander turned 17 last week. All right, happy birthday to Alexander. Um, a few other names. Art Abram is um, a good friend of Janelle's. Uh, it's actually the matron of honor at Janelle's wedding or college roommate. Her husband is um, really uh, in a serious battle with cancer. His name is Art, like if you do Art, A-R-T. And there's a, another girl we've been praying for. Her name is Winnie. Uh, she's two years old, battling leukemia in another local Methodist church. So please continue to lift Winnie in your prayers and Janelle's friend, Art. And then we have a joy to share as well. I don't think, I don't see Taylor. Is Taylor Owen here this morning? Do you see Elizabeth? Oh, great. Taylor, stand up. I didn't see you. Oh, there's Taylor. Stand up for me, Taylor. Stand up, Elizabeth. Taylor and Owen, two of our own, were just named um, the new drum majors of the Hallen Marching Band. So congratulations to both of them. Oh, and thank you. And Darren Messina, whose name is on your prayer list, please uh, keep Darren in prayers. Um, Darren was uh, having a lot of back pain, but he just had some serious uh, kidney issues and was in the hospital for kidney surgery. So please keep, keep Darren Messina in your prayers also. All right, friends, we're going to join together in our uh, song this morning is Prepare Our Hearts for Prayer. And it's a hymn. So what you'll need to do is get out those books. We still have them. Maybe you remember them if you've been a Christian for a while kind of thing. They're called hymnals, and they're there in your pews. If you're sitting in the very front pew, you might have to reach behind you. But there are hymns there, and this is a hymnal. It's a book, a collection of songs kind of thing. And people used to use them in church. So we'll have to break them out today with our screen not working. And I invite you to turn in your hymnal to page 452 page 452, and we'll join together in singing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, as we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning.
Friends, would you please join with me for a moment of silent prayer as we come to our God together in prayer today. Lord God, we thank you for this time when we can come together from the craziness of the week and our schedules and all that happens, Lord. Just have a little time away from the world where we can center ourselves in this place, a sanctuary, a safe place set apart from the world outside with all that goes on outside these walls and this hectic schedule and people hurting each other and the division and things that seem to be all around us so frequently. Lord God, we thank you that we can come to this pray place and think about how we can praise you, how we can thank you for all the blessings you give us. Try to tell the kids, we try to give thanks at least a few times a day. Maybe when we stop to eat or when we're going to bed or getting up in the morning, just to say, thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you give to us. Give us hearts that are grateful, Lord. Give us hearts that understand how truly we're blessed, that there are so many people in this world that go without the blessings that we take for granted every day. And help us to live our lives like people who know that we are blessed. Because we live our lives that way. If we live them with gratitude, then we're going to give back to you. We're going to serve you out of gratitude. We're going to try to spread the blessings you give us in this world to help others. We're going to try to change the world and make it a better place if we live our lives with an attitude that says, we know, God, you've blessed us with so much, with people who love us so we can spread love, with food to eat and shelters. We can help provide that for others. Lord, you give us blessings. Help us be a blessing to others. And we know that happens when we have grateful hearts. Lord, we live in a world still where I saw on the news there was another mass shooting, Lord. And it just happens so often. It's, it's hard to understand how it can be happening so often. And people argue on television or on the news and make it a political thing, Lord. But there's a spirit somehow in our world now where people just can get a gun and, and hurt each other and kill each other. And Lord, something needs to change. And so I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would fall fresh upon the people of God and that your spirit would not just fill our hearts and lives, but spread into the hearts and lives of others. That we might be trying to spread love, that we might build a world where no one would have the desire anymore to pick up a gun and shoot somebody. But we'd be trying to reach every heart and change every heart with the love of God. And let that begin with the people of God, Lord. May all divisions be set aside when we gather in this place. When we come here to be unified by your spirit, may we come here to be filled with your love and carry that out into the world and try to fill every heart with the love of God so we might build a world where your love reigns. May it not be something that we pray for, Lord, just pray for when we pray the Lord's Prayer, that your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven, but may we try to build it with our lives, with the way that we live in love. Father, we pray for all the people that have been mentioned this morning. We lift these people up to you. We pray for all those on our prayer request list. We continue to pray for Eddie, for Robert Lott, for Art Abram, for Winnie, for all those, for Darren, and all those on our prayer request list, for others whom we name before you silently in our hearts. Lord, whether they need the touch of your healing hand or the strength and comfort of your Holy Spirit, we lift them up to you, and we know that you are God, and you're greater than anything they face. So we put them in your hands, Lord, and we pray wherever it is possible, Lord, you use us to be a source of encouragement or hope or of your love for anyone who needs it, Lord, that they might know that they're not alone, not only because you are with them, but because we are as well. We pray all these things together this morning in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We will worship God at this time, the offering of our hearts and our treasures.
Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we present, this, we present this offering to you this morning. We're so thankful, as we've said, for all the gifts, all the blessings you give to us. So take what we give, Lord, and use it to do your work in this world to somehow spread your love so that other people might know that you and your love are real. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. And once more, I'm going to invite you to open up those uh, old books there in your pews called hymnals. You remember those? Many of you do. We're going to turn to page 400. We're using hymns that have been requested. And also, next Sunday is Mother's Day, so we're going to have to use our hymnals next week, too, because on Mother's Day, we usually do, and moms get to pick their favorite hymns, call them out. We'll do a, a hymn sing next Sunday. So if you'd like to call, think about your favorite hymns our next Sunday, moms, grandmas. But for this morning, come thou found of every blessing was requested. That's number 400 in your bulletin. We'll join together in singing, come thou found. of every blessing tune my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me song melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise the mount I'm fixed upon it mount of diary theming love here I raise mine Ebenezer hither by thy help uncome and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a better, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it full. Would you please join with me for a moment of silent prayer as we come to our God together in prayer today. Lord, we just sung a hymn together that reminds us that you are the fount of every blessing. Every blessing that we have flows from you. The people who love us. We just give you thanks, Lord, that, that they, they love us so much. And so we thank you for all the blessings that you give to us. As we prepare to receive the word of God this morning, I just pray, Lord, that it'll be a blessing to us in some way that we'll feel closer to you, that we'll know that you're speaking to us. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, we're going to look at a few scriptures this morning. They're both from Samuel. And um, it's a story about Jonathan, King Saul, David. Um, David became king after Saul. Jonathan was Saul's son. And David and Jonathan were best friends. They were very close. And so we're going to be looking at scriptures today that tell the story of um, basically how Saul and Jonathan were going to die and how David becomes king. So I invite you, if you would, please, to look at these scriptures for us, with us. We're looking at 1 Samuel 20 first. I'm going to be reading it for you, I guess. So you won't be able to see the words on the screen. I forget about that. So the words are on the screen. I can see these. They're big enough for me to be able to see. That's great. I'm going to read them off the back screen and invite you to listen. Then Jonathan said to David, By the Lord, the God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time, the day after tomorrow. If he's favorably disposed toward you, will I not send you word and let you know? But if my father is inclined to harm you, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I do not let you know and send you away safely. May the Lord be with you as he's been with my father. But show me unfailing kindness like that of the Lord as long as I live, so that I may not be killed. Do not ever cut off your kindness from my family. Do not, even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. 
So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. So you see, Jonathan and David, Jonathan is the son of King Saul, and David is going to become king. David's been anointed. David's going to become king. And Jonathan loves Saul like a brother. I'm sorry, Jonathan loves David like a brother. And he knows that there's this animosity between Saul and David because Saul doesn't want David to become king. And what happens is they make this covenant to each other to always watch out for each other. And then what happens is Saul and Jonathan die in the same battle. Jonathan dies also. And so David's going to eventually, this is later, he becomes king. It would have been common practice for David, for a new king, to then wipe out the descendants of the old king. If you ever watched Game of Thrones or someone's things like that when there were kings and stuff, when someone was king and the king died, they'd try to wipe out the descendants of the king, whoever was the new king, so they didn't have a claim to the throne. So that's what David should have done because David was not Saul's son, Jonathan was. David should have tried to kill all of Saul's descendants, but that's not what he did here. So we're going to look at the other scripture now together. The other one, guys, is 1 Samuel. Thank you, 2 Samuel 9. So David asked then, after he becomes king, David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? So he doesn't say in this verse, is there anybody left that I need to kill, that I need to wipe out? Instead, he says, is there anyone left that descended from King Saul that I can show kindness to because I made this promise with Jonathan, we're brothers, and I'm going to look out for you and your family if you end up dying, which is what happened. So they say to him, now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They called him to appear before David, and the king said to him, are you Ziba? Your servant, he replied. The king asked, is there no one still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he, the king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Mekir, son of Amal, in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Mekir, son of Amal. When Mephibosheth, this is his name, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Then Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servants to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table, and he was crippled in both feet. So I know you can't see it on screen this morning, but that's the story today, and I'm going to try to unpack it for you. So, again, who is Mephibosheth? That's a mouthful to spit out. Mephibosheth is Jonathan's son or King Saul's grandson. And we learn in 2 Samuel 4, 4 that a nurse was trying to escape with Mephibosheth out of fear for their life when Saul and Jonathan died. They're trying to get the prince out of there, and he, the nurse accidentally crippled him. As she dropped him. So Mephibosheth is crippled, and he spends his life crippled. And then we learn that he's in hiding. Jonathan does, puts his son into hiding. David becomes king, and he says, not, is there anyone I need to wipe out so that they can not have a claim to the throne? And instead, he says, is there anyone out there descended from Saul to Jonathan that I can show kindness to? And there is someone. His name is Mephibosheth. He's this crippled man. He spent his life in hiding for fear for his life. He could have been a prince, okay? The place he is hiding is Lodabar, which literally translated this morning means no pasture. Lodabar means no pasture. So he's in a barren wasteland. 
you've heard the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. A pasture is back then where the flocks could feed, and there'd be water, and there'd be a way to provide for yourself. He's literally in a place that means no pasture. He's hiding there without hope. And he's probably living in fear. Every day of his life, he's going to be killed. And to top it off, he was crippled from the time he was little. So in verses 5 and 6, we see that David sends for him, and Mephibosheth comes. And the first thing he says is, don't be afraid. First thing David says to Mephibosheth is, don't be afraid. He's afraid he might be killed. He's being brought before the king, afraid he might be killed. Instead, David shows him kindness because of a promise, because of a covenant made by David and Mephibosheth's father, Jonathan. David has no real reason to honor this promise. Jonathan's gone, but he does. He has a faithful promise that he made to Jonathan, and he keeps it to look out for his descendants. And Mephibosheth has nothing to earn this kindness. He was a crippled person. He's been in hiding. He's done nothing to earn this grace, but David shows him the king's grace anyways. And in the story, this represents God's promise to us. It represents God's grace given to each one of us, a faithful, heavenly king keeping his promise to us when we've done nothing to earn it or deserve it. Grace finds us. Grace finds us sometimes when we are low. There are many other stories in the Bible where this happens. Think of the prodigal son, right, eating with the pigs. Think of Joseph in prison. They're lost. They were without hope. Mephibosheth is crippled, and he's hiding in a place of no pasture, a place where it seemed God was not present, fearing every day for his life, thinking about how he should have been a prince, and now he has no hope for the future. How could God have possibly felt present to him in his life? Sometimes I think Mephibosheth must have grown up his whole life thinking, God, how could you let this happen to me? I was supposed to be a prince. What did I possibly do to deserve this when I was a child? I was just a kid when my father and grandfather died. Instead of a prince, here I am, a cripple, hiding in a place with no pasture. Where are you, God? How could you let this happen to me? You see, I don't imagine Mephibosheth just being literally physically crippled, but emotionally crippled or spiritually crippled, crippled without hope in every way. In fact, he says in verse 8, when David sends to him, he calls himself a dead dog. Why would you care about a dead dog like me? Dogs weren't even the beloved family pets back then. You know, they were today. Dogs were looked down upon. They were a nuisance. He's saying he's nothing in the eyes of the world and clearly nothing in his own eyes. It must have been completely transforming to realize he was still special to the king, that he mattered to the king, that his life had meaning to the king. And then David gives him a place at the king's table. And that represents an eternal thing for us, that we'll eat at the king's table in heaven, that grace is extended to us. He's given servants, Mephibosheth is, who will work the crops, who will take care of him. His son Michael will be shown the grace of the king also. So what does this story for so long ago mean to us really about these kings and whether or not they'd be she fighting and wiping out each other's lines or whether they'll be kind to each other and give grace to each other. Many people in this world feel like Mephibosheth. They feel like a dead dog. They feel like their lives don't matter. And they wonder where God could possibly be. They say, look at my life. Look at the things that are going, how could there possibly be a God? How could there possibly be grace from God with all the things that are happening in my life right now. Or maybe there's someone who did believe in God, but all of life's problems overwhelm them, and they say, where could God possibly be right now? And in fact, haven't we all had times when we said, at least once in our life, God, where are you? I am in a place of no pasture. I can't see your blessings right now. I can't see it. God, where are you right now when I need you? How could you let this happen to me or to this person I love, God, where are you? And that is when we have to remember that God is always with us, that grace finds us when we are low, that God is a faithful king who always keeps his promises. When he says we shall not want in the 23rd Psalm, he means it. He gives us green pastures to lie down. He gives us blessings. He's the fount of every blessing as we just sang. 
We get caught up in our problems, but we forget the blessings that are around us. He restores our souls in the 23rd Psalm, right? He gives us all these things. So maybe we feel crippled, if you will, by life sometimes. Maybe there's marriage troubles or even divorce. Maybe an illness we or a loved one are battling. Maybe depression, it can be crippling. Maybe fear and doubt over a job situation or something. Maybe we or a loved one are battling an addiction. Whatever it may be in your life or in the life of your loved ones, life can often put us in situations where we feel crippled, where we feel without hope, where we feel cut off from God and wonder if there really is a God that loves us, like Mephibosheth. But the message of today's scripture is that grace always finds us, that God made a promise to us, and God will not go back on that promise. God will not leave us in that place of no pasture. God will give us everything the 23rd Psalm says. David sent for Mephibosheth. He reached out to him, but he didn't have to respond. He could have let his bitterness keep him in Lodabar, in that place of no pasture. He didn't have to come to David. He was even afraid for his life. He certainly could have let fear keep him where he was. He didn't have to respond to the grace that was being offered to him, but he did. And when he did, he found that he was special in the eyes of the king, that a faithful king always keeps his promises, and that he would eat at the king's table forevermore. So friends, if you or a loved one are somehow in Lodabar, if you're in a place of no pastor right now, what I mean is if you're in a place right now where you wonder, your loved ones wonder, Where's God? I just don't see God right now. I'm in a place where I'm hurting, where my loved one is hurting. And where is God when we need God? I believe God is reaching out to you. I believe God is always reaching out to us with his grace, with his love, with his mercy. I believe God is always there keeping his promises. There's a place at the table for us. But we have to be willing to leave that place of low to bar. We have to find a way out to reach back to God, to receive those feeling of blessings again, right? I tried to say to the kid this morning, we give thanks a couple times a day at least, at nighttime, during the day a few times, to give thanks to God. So I'm always saying, God, thank you. Just thank you for this food. Thank you for this day at the end of the day. Thank you, God, for your blessings. So I'm not in a place in my head where I ever feel cut off from God and think, I'm not reaching back to God because God's reaching out to me. God is reaching out to me. When I'm low, when I'm broken, when we are, God is reaching out to us to give us the strength that we need and the hope that we need. And so we need to reach back. And so a few times a day at least, I make sure to say, God, thank you. I'm reaching out to you, God, to thank you for these blessings. And when I'm in a place where I'm low and we all have that in our lives, still, I need to have an attitude that says, God, let me look for the blessings in my life. Let me reach out to you because I know you're reaching out to me. Sometimes people feel abandoned by God as if God's not there, but he is. He is reaching out to us. There's no such thing as a place of no pasture, a place where God can't reach us. But we have to reach back to God and know that through God's amazing grace, he is reaching out to us. Friends, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. And... Holy Communion is a symbol of God's grace. It's reminding us that God reached out to us on the cross and that we're supposed to be the body of Christ, that we're supposed to receive it, receive that blessing, receive that reminder. We take it every month. So we're constantly reminded of God's love for us. We're always remember what he's done for us so we can share that news for others and be the body of Christ and carry it out into the world. When we're lost, when we're separated, when our loved ones are, when it feels that God is not reaching out to you, oh, I promise you he is. I promise you he's reaching out to you to reach you when you are low, and then all we need to do is reach back to him. And so I try to have an attitude a few times a day at least. God, just let me say thanks for this blessing. At the end of the day, I list my blessings when I pray. God, thank you for the people that love me. Thank you for all the blessings I have. Thank you, Lord. And that gives me a place in my heart where I can be ready to receive God or hear God reaching out to me. So I encourage you to try to have that attitude even when you're low. I promise you, God's grace is reaching out to you. Friends, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion together. And as I said, we're going to go back as the congregation voted to do so. We're going to come back 
to uh, breaking up into sections and coming forward here to receive communion. So those who are ushers this morning, those who are serving communion this morning, I invite you to come forward at this time. A congregation will give you instruction in just a moment as I pass out the elements to the ushers. Those who are serving today, communion, if you please come forward at this time. So, friend, they're going to spread out along the front here, and we're going to be taking communion by coming forward, and I'll ask you to take the bread and the cup and take it back to your pew, and then we will um, all partake together. So um, I'm going to invite you to do that. We'll say a prayer when that happens, and then we will all take together. So is there one more or two more people? Come up. Thank you, Christian. I come up for me, Nick, please. All right, friends, I invite you to come forward to receive the bread and the cup and then take it back to your spot and then we will all partake together. If you want the communion, the COVID cups, they're up here on the altar. Friends, I forgot there's also gluten-free bread up here if you need gluten-free bread. Again, if you're able, I ask you to hold it and we'll all partake together in a moment.
Friends, communion represents God's grace because Jesus Christ went to the cross. He gave his life for us because through God's grace, we're saved. Through God's grace, we can have eternal life. We don't do anything to earn it. We don't do anything to deserve it. When Mephibosheth was just somebody who was lost, who had no hope, but the king reached out to him and gave him grace and mercy and a seat at his table for the rest of his life. So it is with God. God reaches out to us, and there's nothing we've done to earn it or deserve it. We can't be a good enough person. God just says, I love you. I sent Jesus to die for you, and I'm reaching out to you and giving you grace. It's God's amazing grace we celebrate when we celebrate communion. On that night so long ago, Christ took bread. He broke it for his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this now and be grateful. Jesus then took the cup and he poured it out for his disciples and said, this is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all the world for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this now and be thankful. Amen. For as the ushers will be passing bowls to put your cups into, and as they do so, I invite you to stand if you're able. Again, the words will be on the screen behind you, but you probably know words to this song because it's a remake of a beloved hymn, Amazing Grace. My chains are gone as we sing a final song celebrating God's amazing grace.
My son Christian is here with us this morning. He's got a bright orange shirt on in the front, home from college this morning. His name is Christian, which means uh, someone who follows Jesus, a disciple of Christ. He's probably thankful that we didn't name him Mephibosheth, right? <laughs> His girlfriend, Mike, is sitting there, standing there beside him, probably thankful also we didn't name him Mephibosheth, <laughs> right? Maybe they would have never started dating if that were the case, right? We wanted to give a Christian a name, though, that applied to all of us, right? But the name of Phibosheth applies to all of us. His story is our story. He's someone who sometime in his life did not have hope, who felt his life had no meaning or purpose, and there's nothing he did to deserve God reaching out to him, God's grace, the king in this case, reaching out to him. And that's how it is with us. It's grace that we're saved by grace, by God's amazing grace. There's nothing you can do to deserve it. There's nothing you can do to earn it. You just receive it, and then you're thankful for it. And you're thankful for the blessings that God gives you. And you go out and try to change the world and reach others when they are low. And share the blessings you have with others. And try to change this world into what God wants it to be. Mephibosheth's story is our story. God has a place for us at his table forevermore. Where our loved ones are. Where we'll be one day. And in this world, we try to spread that love with everyone that we can. As you'll go forth from this place and do so with your lives, sharing God's amazing grace and love. May the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forevermore. Amen.